Right, in this video, we're going to be solving some past paper questions on linear combinations of random variables. So the first one that we have here reads, the masses in kilograms of large and small sacks of grain have the distributions normal with mean 53 and variance 11, also normal for the small sack with mean 14 and variance 3 respectively. Part A says, find the probability that the mass of a randomly chosen large sec is greater than four times the mass of a randomly chosen small sec. All right, so we've got large and small secs of grain. So let's say L is the normal distribution for our large secs. So that's N, 53, 11. And let's say S is the normal distribution for our small sex with mean 14 and variance 3. We're told to find the probability that the mass of a randomly chosen large sec, okay, so we want to find the probability that L is greater, greater than 4 times, so this is a multiple, so I'm multiplying by 4, the mass of a randomly chosen small sec, so 4 times S. So this here is a multiple because we have essentially multiplied. So when you double, triple, quadruple, and so on, that's going to be a multiple. Okay, so what we can do here is we want to put both of our variables on the same side. So we can move 4s to the left-hand side so that this becomes the probability of L minus 4s, and this is greater than 0. And now at this point, I'm going to rewrite this as another random variable. We'll call that D is equal to L minus 4S. And the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want to keep writing L minus 4S. It kind of gets tedious. So we can rewrite it as a single letter. And that letter is going to be D. So we need to find the expectation of D as well as the variance of D. So the expectation of D, remember this is L minus 4S. So using our results, this is going to be the expectation of L minus 4 times the expectation of S. So the expectation of D is going to be the expectation of L is 53 minus 4 times the expectation of S, which is 14. And so if we punch this into the calculator, the expectation of D is equal to 53 minus 4 times 14 and that gives us negative 3. We also need to find the variance of D. So the variance of D is going to be equal to, remember D is simply L minus 4S. So that's going to be the variance of L plus 4 squared times the variance of is all right so the variance of d is equal to the variance of l that's 11 plus 4 squared that's 16 multiplied by the variance of s which is 3 3 so if we simplify the variance of d is going to be 11 plus 16 times 3 and that gives us 59 and so because both L and S follow independent normal distributions, it also means that L minus 4S follows a normal distribution. So we can say that D follows a normal distribution with mean negative 3 and variance 59. And we are evaluating the probability that L minus 4S is greater than 0. So that's the probability that D is greater than 0. So if we standardize, this will become the probability that z is greater than 0 minus minus 3, so 0 plus 3, divided by the square root of 59. So let's punch our result there into the calculator. That's going to be 3 over root 59, and that gives us 0 0.391, correct to 3 decimal places, and we can write this as 1 minus phi of 0 0.391.
Let's read off the value of phi of 0 0.391 from the normal distribution tables. So that's 0 0.6521. So if we simplify this, this is 1 minus 0 0.6521. And that gives us 0 0.3479. So if we round this off correct to three significant figures, our final answer will be 0 0.348. Part B says a lift can safely carry a maximum mass of 1000 kgs. Find the probability that the lift can safely carry 12 randomly chosen large six and 25 randomly chosen small six. We're looking at 12 randomly chosen large six. This is a sum. It's independent observations of the same random variable. So we can write that as this is for large six. So it's L1 plus L2 all the way up to L12. And we also want 25 randomly chosen small six. That's also independent observations of the random variable S. So that's going to be plus S1 plus S2 all the way up to S25. And we need to find the probability that this mass is less than 1000 kgs so that a lift can safely carry it. So that means we're finding the probability that this long expression here is less than 1000. Because if this weight, the weight of 12 randomly chosen large 6 plus 25 randomly chosen small 6 is greater than 1000, then the lift will not be able to carry it because it has exceeded the maximum mass. So instead of us continuing to write this as L1 plus L2 up to L12 plus S1 plus S2 up to S25, we can rewrite this as another letter. For example, we could write this as T and say T is L1 plus L2 all the way up to L12 plus S1 plus S2 all the way up to S25. Okay, so let me just get rid of our solution to part one so that we have more space to work with. All right, so it means we have to find the expectation of T as well as its variance. So the expectation of T is going to be equal to this here is a sum. So to find the mean of a sum, it's N times the expectation. So in this case, it's going to be 12 times the expectation of L plus this will be 25 times the expectation of S. So it means the expectation of T is going to be 12 times the expectation of L. The expectation of L is 53 plus 25 times the expectation of X, which is 14. So the expectation of T is equal to, let's punch this into the calculator, 12 times 53 plus 25 multiplied by 14. That gives us 986. All right, we also need its variance. The variance of T is going to be, remember this is the variance of a sum, so it's N times var of X. So in this case, it's 12 times var of L plus 25 times var of S. So var of T is equal to 12 times the var of L, which is 11, plus 25 times the var of S, which is 3. So the var of T, let's punch that into the calculator, that's 12 times 11 plus 25 times 3, and that gives us 207. So because both L and S follow independent normal distributions, it means that also T follows a normal distribution. So T follows a normal distribution with mean 986 and variance 207. And here we want to find the probability that T is less than 1000. So this is the probability that T is less than 1000. 
So let's standardize as the probability that z is less than 1000 minus our mean 986 divided by the standard deviation, so root 207. And so the probability that z is less than 1000 minus 986 over the square root of 207, that gives us 0 0.973. So this is phi of 0 0.973. So read off the value of phi of 0 0.973 from the normal distribution tables. We get 0 0.8348. And so to three significant figures, that's 0 0.835. And that's our final answer. Let's look at one last example. So here we have that the heights of a certain variety of a plant are normally distributed with mean 110 centimeters and variance 1050 centimeters squared. Two plants of this variety are chosen at random. Find the probability that the height of one of these plants is at least 1.5 times the height of the other. Okay, so let's say that h is the random variable, height in centimeters of certain variety of plant, certain variety of plant all right and we know that h follows a normal distribution with mean 110 and variance 1050 two plants of this variety are chosen at random so let's call one of the plants h1 and the other one h2 then they say find the probability that the height of one of these plants is at least 1.5 times the height of the other Okay, so the probability that the height of one of these plants, so that could be H1, is at least so greater than or equal to, but since we're under normal conditions, that's just the same as greater than, is at least 1.5 times the height of the other, so 1.5 times H2. So this is the probability that H1 is greater than 1.5 H2. But notice that here they didn't specify which of the two plants is 1.5 times the height of the other. So we could have also written it the other way around. The probability that H2 is at least 1.5 times the height of H1. So it means that we're going to have to multiply our probability by 2 at the end when we finish our calculation because it could also be the other way around all right so keep in mind that we're going to have to multiply by two i'll just remove the two for now but don't forget that at the end we're going to multiply by two for this reason so let's put both terms on one side so this becomes the probability that h1 minus 1.5 h2 is greater than zero so let's rewrite this as the letter d d is equal to h1 minus 1.5 h2 all right so we need to find the expectation of d as well as its variance so the expectation of d is going to be the expectation of h since h1 is a is an observation of h minus 1.5 times again the expectation of h because h2 is an observation of h Okay, so the expectation of D is equal to the expectation of H, that's 110, minus 1 1.5 times the expectation of H, so 110 as well. The expectation of D is equal to, we've got 110 minus 1 1.5 multiplied by 110, and that gives us negative 55. All right, so we also need to find the variance of D that's going to be equal to the variance of h plus 1.5 squared times the variance of h. So the variance of d is equal to the variance of h, which is 1050, 
plus 1.5 squared multiplied by 1050. So it means the variance of D is equal to that's 1050 plus 1 1.5 squared times 1050. And so this gives us 3412.5. So this becomes D follows a normal distribution with mean negative 55 and variance 3412.5. And we are looking for the probability that D is greater than zero. So the probability that D is greater than zero, that's going to be the probability that Z is zero minus minus 55. So zero plus 55 over the square root of 3412.5. So the probability that Z is greater than Let's punch this into the calculator. That's 55 over the square root of 3,412.5. And that gives us 0 0.942. So this is 1 minus phi of 0 0.942. So let's read off the value of phi of 0 0.942 from our normal distribution tables. So that's 0 0.8269. So if we subtract that from 1, we get 0 0.1731. Meaning that, remember we said at the beginning here, this could also just as well have been the probability that H2 is at least 1.5 times H1. Okay, so we're going to have to multiply by 2 to cater for this probability as well. So this becomes 0 0.1731 multiplied by 2, which gives us 0 0.3462. So therefore, our final answer is 0 0.346. Alright, so that's it for linear combinations. Make sure to go through the quiz and I'll see you in the next video.